Hello, my friends. A very good morning. God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit come to enlighten the understanding of everyone, that everyone may understand His will and put it in practice. So I would like to share with you what it means to believe in God. Because here, in chapter 3, if you read the book of John, you will verify that the Lord Jesus speaks a lot about belief and believing. He starts speaking to Nicodemus that he was needing to be born again. He said if he was not born of the water and the Spirit, he would not enter the kingdom of God. He speaks here in verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned. But he who does not believe in him is all is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And we spoke yesterday that in the last verse of this chapter that Jesus says, He who believes in the Son has everlasting life. And he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, eternal life, and more. It says, But the wrath of God abides on him. Meaning, this wrath of God, which we do not deal with a lot here, but soon we're going to talk about this. The wrath of God, the hatred of God, the revolt. We're going to speak a lot about this because the gospel has been preached based on love, love, love. God is love. Oh, God is love. God is grace. The grace of God is sufficient. God understands me. People, if they could, they would put in the Bible, God gets me. God understands my sins. He knows I'm human, that I'm flesh. So many people take their faith based on emotions, based on music and melodies, which makes one to feel a bunch of things, including those who are not sinners. But here in verse 18, he says, But whoever believes in him is not condemned. Meaning there is condemnation, there is condemnation, there is wrath upon those who do not believe in Jesus. Then many people say, Oh, but I believe. Come on. How can I not believe? I go to church. I, I'm this, I'm that. I do this, I do that. I am a person who takes good care of my duties at home, at church. This does not mean that you believe because the church, the church of Ephesus, the first church where Jesus spoke to, the most spiritual church, that church, exactly the church of Ephesus, which had much works, Jesus speaks of the works which it had, their perseverance, their faith. But, at the end, Jesus says, you have left your first love. So what kind of belief is this? Which leaves the first love, which abandons the first love. They have works, they have deeds, they are perseverant, but they also put aside the first love. So I want you to understand what belief means. Here in verse 18 it says, He who believes in him is not condemned, meaning justified. 
If he's not condemned, he is justified. And why is he justified? Because of his faith. But what kind of faith? One might think, many people have thought that by the fact that they serve God, they do the work of God, they help others and so forth. This is enough. Belief in God involves you molding your life, your behavior, according to the Word of God. That's it. What's the point for me to be a pastor? What's the point of me being a servant of God? What's the point of me doing this and that and the other? But I have a bad character. If I'm a person who practices sin, if I'm a bad husband, a bad father, if I'm a bad servant, I serve. But if for any reason my behavior, my way of being, of carrying myself before God, not just before God, but before men, before men, before people, if my behavior does not match with what I say I believe in, then my belief is worthless. Is it not true? What's the point? For me to win over others to Jesus and lose my own salvation. There's no way. It doesn't work. So when a person truthfully believes in the Lord Jesus, the first thing he does is to leave sin. That's the first thing. Because God is righteousness, God is justice, God is holiness. How can I serve Him if I'm living in sin or if I live in sin? There's no way. Light and darkness do not match. It's here. He says that the light has come into the world and the men loved darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. So, belief revolves an ethical faith, in which you give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and God what is God's. You are an upright person, just, correct. You honor your word, which you pledge, and it's the thing which we see the least in the world, our servants of God honoring their own word. So, my dear friend, seek to evaluate, weigh your conduct. Because it's pointless for you to know the whole sacred scripture, but be a person, as Nicodemus, for example, who was even a sincere man. He was a master, ruler, dedicated. But he needed to be born again. Because if he was not born again, he was not considered a child of God. If we're not born again, we're not considered a child of God. But this new birth involves belief for you to assume your faith in the Lord Jesus, your character, the character of Jesus. Not to say that you believe in Him, but to seek to lead people according to His will. He said, men love darkness more than light. Many people do not want to convert. Do you know why? It's not that they don't want to believe. They want to believe but they enjoy the sin. They enjoy that which they do which is wrong. So how is it possible to believe in God and enjoy injustice? God is not injustice. God is holiness. How can a person believe in God at the same time? Serve sin. This is the big situation of many people inside the church, unfortunately. We even serve as officials in the church. My friend, 
it is pointless, absolutely pointless to say that we believe in God and have a bad conduct. No, you believe and when you believe, you mold yourself according to your faith, your belief in the person whom you believe. So, in the case of believing the Lord Jesus, it's this. It's for you to mold your character, your life in the mirror of our Lord Jesus Christ. You mirror yourself in Him. We call this to truthfully believe in Him. So He says, He who believes in Me will not be condemned. But he who does not believe, meaning they don't have a conduct according to to my words, my teachings, then they have nothing for me. God bless you. And until tomorrow, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. Amen.